If you are looking for an in-depth book review on this book, I would highly recommend you go to one of the links down below. Those are some book reviews that I watched and I heavily agreed with and I highly suggest you watch if you've never read this book or you aren't sure what's going on, you don't know what this book is about, etc, etc. I'm not going to be going too deep into details with this story. I'm instead going to just assume you know what the story is about and we're going to go from there. This video does have a lot of spoilers, not only because I am talking about the second book in a series, but also because this isn't necessarily a normal book review. This is me talking about the things that happened in the book and what I think would have been super cool if Ernest Cline considered changing. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Miranda and welcome to my universe. Today we are talking about the great novel work of fiction, Ready Player Two by Ernest Cline, which is the sequel to the beloved Ready Player One. I literally went to Barnes and Noble, paid full price for this book, which I hardly ever do. I usually pay for my books on Amazon or I go thrift shopping. So to go to Barnes and Noble and buy you, to support you, Ernest Klein, and you let me down. I thought it would be kind of cool and fun to talk about the things that could have been redone, rewritten, to make this book more redeemable. So I'm going to put you down now. Let's talk about Ready Player Two. First things first, the biggest issue about this book, the elephant in the room, the thing that is the most concerning, <laughs> our main character, Wade Watts. In Ready Player Two, he basically becomes this gigantic, I could use many words to describe him. We very, very quickly find out that Wade Watts has let power and riches get to his head. He's just really mean and very vicious and invades a lot of people's privacy and just is a terrible person. After winning authority of the Oasis, Wade Watts begins to invade a ton of people's privacy, look up their real identities without their permission. He begins stalking people, especially people who try to hide from him and don't want to be discovered by him. But you know, he has all the power in the world so he can still find them. So he abuses that power and decides to go against people's wills. Oh, he also becomes this giant man baby and he decides that any person who speaks ill of him at all is going to die. Yup. The best part about this entire situation is that throughout the entire book, even at the ending, Wade never apologizes and he's never redeemed. Hold on, so you mean to tell me that the hero of our story does all of these terrible things and Ernest Klein excuses them? Ernest Klein, what did you do? <laughs> I think that this would have been so great. And I am honestly kind of mad that Ernest Klein did not take the opportunity to do this, but he could have easily made Wade Watts the villain of the story. Just think about it, okay? Consider it. Wade Watts is already a terrible person. He already has fallen so far down. He already has done things that no person should ever do and he definitely should have been arrested. So just take all of that, okay? And instead of excusing it, let's build his character off of it and make him the villain by the end of the book. Turn the complete storyline upside down. People don't expect the main character to be the villain. And most of the books that are out that have the main character be the villain, you go into the story explicitly knowing that. But with this book, you go into it knowing that Wade Watts is the hero. The, the hero. <laughs> I mean, he's the main character, of course. Why wouldn't he be anything but the great hero that saves the day? But instead, Ernest Cline has taken this character and tainted him. And yes, he's human, so he'll make mistakes, but he never realizes his mistakes. Why? Because he could be the villain. I was actually reading this book and as I was going along, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if Wade is the villain. Like that's the only explanation I can think of here in this situation. Anyways, enough about Wade. Let's talk about the general tone of the story. The way I see it is that Ernest Cline wrote this book and tried to grow it up, 
he tried to mature his storyline with his audience, which is totally fine, totally understandable. A lot of series do this. As you read the series, you can tell that it gets darker or gets more mature as it goes along. That's just natural. It's a natural writing process. However, it's almost as if Ernest Cline decided that in order to make his book older, he'll throw in a few explicit scenes. And then he'll throw in five times the amount of cuss words that were in his original book into this one. And then ta-da, this book is older now. That's, that's not how it works. <laughs> yes, it's okay to add more explicit things if you want to. Yes, it's okay to add more cuss words, but in my opinion, when I think of a book growing up with its audience, I think of darker themes. I think of exploring complex ideas. I think of engaging with the audience and making them think about really dark, deep things, heavy things. That's what I see maturing as. Not all of these petty little things that are very shallow don't really get deep at all. What really could have been done so much better is for Ernest Glein to kind of take a step back, kind of slow down a little bit, okay? Now I'm not saying the story necessarily slow down because I definitely wouldn't have gotten through it if it was any slower, but to almost think to himself, okay, what can I develop on? What can I create? What can I bring out of this story that will make people really think and really second guess about in their lives? Or <laughs> Ernest Cline could have just kept the same exact tone as his first book and I would have totally been okay with that. Keep it PG-13, my friend. You could have done that and I would have been happy. <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about with this book is the storyline itself. Now, after doing my research, watching a lot of videos, seeing what other people thought of this book, the general public did not like how this story was very similar to the first book. Yes, we have a different villain, and yes, we have this different technology, but that's kind of the only thing that's different. The majority of this book, we just followed the same characters who, by the way, didn't develop at all throughout the story. Follow the same adventure, and yes, there's a time constraint, but I actually do think that that took away from the story and did more harm than good, in my opinion. What Ernest Cline needed was something new, something fresh. And you could do totally different things with this. You could have made Wade struggle with the literal death of the planet. We take this story from a virtual realm and make it real life. From the beginning of Ready Player One, we're told and we're made aware of the terrible condition of the planet Earth. The planet is dying underneath these people's feet. Real feet, not their virtual feet. And they are doing nothing about it. And that's what I think could have been also explored more was this theme of environmentalism. Make your second book all about Wade having to actually save the real planet, please. I also didn't like the ending. That was not my favorite. I don't like how there are now duplicates of these people that live on this, this spaceship that is fake it's fake. <laughs> and so now people can live forever. It seems very rushed to me. It feels like Ernest Cline really tried so hard, so hard. And I almost feel like he could have just, like I said earlier, taken a step back, slowed down, really thought about what he was writing and really search himself and try to figure out how he can take things from his life to improve his characters and develop on certain issues in real life. And I just feel like he kind of tried to fill in issues with the first book, but instead of fixing them, he just made it worse and almost tainted his entire storyline for a lot of people. At the end of the day, I'm not going to tell him how to write his book. I'm not going to tell him that I can write it better because I definitely could not. I am just simply saying that this story fell short for a lot of people, for the majority of people who read this story, and there are definitely things that he could have done to prevent that and to redeem the story and his characters. I really hope that Ernest Klein. first of all, I hope he never stops writing. I loved Ready Player One. I actually want to read Armada, which is his second novel, I believe, and I really hope that he never ever stops writing and stops creating because there is a lot to say about putting work out there and trying different things and building on what you did wrong in the past and just 
learning. You know, that's what this entire journey is about. So thank you for watching this if you stuck through all of it. Please comment down below whether you read the book, tried to read the book, finished it, loved the book, hated the book, anything at all. If you have anything to say, please comment down below. I would love to hear what you have to say. Also, do you think this book is going to become a movie? I would love to hear your answer to that as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I love you all so much. Please be safe, make good choices, and I will definitely see you next time. Bye!